Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Commissioner, thanks for being here. Uh, I'd echo uh, the comments of everybody else. You've got a very tough job, but your background suggests that you've done this before. So when you were turning around different companies, and you said you were called in to help out with troubled companies. When you look at the IRS, your number one goal right now, it, it has to be restoring its image with the public, does it not? It is. I think, as I said, it, I, I don't say it as uh, words. Public trust in the agency is critical. It's our most valuable asset. It's important to the, you know, we collect 91 percent of the revenues. We touch virtually every American. Yeah. So we've got to have people confident for. And we, and we agree on that. And I work, think we also gotta, agree that you and I both work for the same people. Uh, I've always said yeah, these are well, taxpayers' funds we're spending. They absolutely. need to be confident we're stewards of it. And, and I think Mr. Paulson alluded to whenever he's at back home, and Mr. Marchant talked about the same thing. When I'm back home in Western Pennsylvania, uh, I talk to people all the time, and we try to gather information. As you just said, you know, come to us, let us know what's going on, make us aware of what's happening. You know, I, I tell me people come to me and talk to me, and this is not anecdotal, this is a fact. You know what they say, you can use my story, but you can't use my name. I, now, the reason they say that is because the history uh, doesn't, doesn't have the same projection as the words. And, you know, I've been around for a little bit of time. There's usually when people tell little stories or jokes, they say there's the three biggest lies. Uh, two of them could be something up other, but the last one is always, I'm from the government, and I'm here to help you. Right. Uh, I would just suggest, and I don't know how you're going to do this. You're a turnaround guy, so I'd like to hear. How are you going to turn that around? I hear what you're saying, but I heard Mr. Warfel come here, and he gave us a document, said this is our path to getting this fixed, uh, and then he didn't stay in the path very long and went someplace else. You're on board now, and this is a turnaround issue. I mean, I'm really concerned about this because I've got to tell you, the American people, uh, I don't know what the approval rating is of the IRS, but you know what? They're, they're scared to death of the IRS right. because of the past performance. So we have these talks. It's great that we go back and forth and we say, how are you going to fix it? But the reality of it is they just don't trust the IRS because of the way they've been handled in the past. These people aren't treated very well. And I would just say what you said earlier. Did I understand you to say that if you make over a million dollars, you've got a one in ten chance of getting audited? That's the number, yes. That's the number. Why, who in the hell would want to make a million dollars in? You don't want to make that kind of money because the IRS is going to audit you. That's one reason. You talk about incentives not to do something, that would be it. Now, I'm not saying that every audit's a bad audit, but I'm just saying every audit strikes fear in the, in, the single, in the heart of every single American. So your job now, you're coming in. You're going to turn it around. And, and I looked at the figures. The, the Secretary of the Treasury makes $199,700 a year. You make slightly less than that. But I also know that... Uh, because and I'm not Title eligible five. for a performance award. All right, all right, but wait a minute, wait a minute. Title V of the U.S. Code, the IRS has in, has in recent years paid 72 of its employees annual salaries higher than that of the Secretary of the Treasury. This includes 33 employees who earn more than $225,000. Is this part of your turnaround, getting a better focus on how we pay these folks? Oh, yes. <clears throat> actually, we have special authority that was provided by the Congress, actually, with the real. So was the answer is yes, you, you're going to look into that? I've already looked into okay. it. Okay. Uh, and, in fact, I will tell you, if part of it comes under what's called critical pay authority, and I am very concerned that that authority now expires, because what we've used that for, uh, primarily there are 22 employees under critical pay, or 29, I guess, and more so than that half is, of them are of, IT of employees. So what it is that you're going to do. And I know you yeah. haven't been there that long, but I also know because of your background, there are certain things you see relevant to this agency that you've seen in other companies. And as you were called in to help companies that were in a troubling times, your number one objective right now, and I've got to tell you, this, this, uh, this idea, and I know we've talked about people having, ha drawing conclusions, but you were drawing a conclusion that says, I'm not going to make a statement based on people making a statement uh, on facts that aren't yet put out there, whether it be Chairman Camp, whether it be the President of the United States, or whoever it is. The truth of the matter is, we don't know yet what the answer is in the investigation of the IRS, do we? Uh, no, that's right. We're all waiting to see what you find. But the answer is yes. We, uh, you, we don't know, do we? No, that's correct. Okay, so we don't know. So nobody can make a declarative statement saying, oh, this is not, it's not funny for me. I've got to no, tell you. No, no, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm I just heard, you know, When I, I go just, home, this is... I've this heard is, declarative statements from several people And I understand already. that, but you didn't tell them exactly what they're asking you. My point would be nobody can stand in front of you and tell you that this is clear, that these are, there's absolutely not one smidgen of, of, of evidence that proves it's not there. The, the, the investigation isn't done. It isn't done. Those type of answers add to the gap between what people trust 
and what they have faith in anymore. You know why? Because the answer is never a direct answer. It's, a not, it's an end run. When I come out of church after Mass on Sunday, when I'm in a Walmart, I'm in a Kmart, when I'm down at my little coffee shop, you know what they keep saying? How do we know we can trust you? How do we know we can trust the government anymore? That's a heck of a position to be in in this country and in this time because overwhelming data that we've looked at, sir, is that they can't trust us and we've given them every reason not to. So when we have hearings like this, I think the open exchange is great. I think the ability to talk to each other is great. Straight answers are the things that people are looking for. I would just say to you, and I've I, I got to tell you, when people tell me back home, you can use my story, but you can't use my name, that is the most chilling effect of what has gone on. And the fact that it goes unanswered for weeks after week, month after month, and we keep hearing, there's actually nothing there. Let's move on, folks. Nothing to see here. That's when they know, you know what? It's another cover-up. So I got to tell you, you've got a tough job in front of you, but no tougher than mine. I've got I to gotta take care of 705,687 people in western Pennsylvania and the rest of this country who expect us to do the right thing for them because that's the model that we've always stood for. That's what America means. So I, I thank you for being here. Any way we can help you, I'd, I'd, I'd like to weigh in, and we will get back and forth on some questions we have because the investigation is far from over, and there's other things I think we need to look at. But you need to turn the agency around. We need to turn the government around so we can instill that faith and trust the American people need to have in us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.